all God's people said. Good morning, Life Church. If you're visiting with us this morning, thanks for joining us for worship this morning. We hope you leave here blessed. If, if you don't, give us another chance next week. Each week gets a little bit better. And we're really going to need a lot of help this morning. You can see this big, empty stage up here. So when we can hear your guys' voices coming back up here, it really helps us sing out even harder. Can you all do that for us this morning? Yeah, four of you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. We've got three or four mics up here that's open. So, But listen, if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, don't leave that way today. You don't have to. This altar is always open. It never closes. I say it every Sunday, but I'm going to continue to say it till the Lord takes me home. Let's bow and have a word of prayer this morning. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, so we humbly bow in your presence, Lord. We just want to thank you for all the wonderful blessings you've given us, Father. Lord, for blessing us with another day of life, Lord. Lord, for being able to just come into your house and to praise and to worship you, Father. Lord, with all of us here, there's many needs that, that are here this morning, Father. There's many aches, many sorrows. Lord, we just pray that you lay your hand upon them and let them feel your presence, Lord. Be with this service. Be with the ones that make it up. And again, if they be one here that doesn't know your son Jesus as our personal Savior, today be the day of salvation. We love you. We praise you. In the last name I pray, amen. <laughs>
bursting inside us. We cannot contain your love will surely come find us like blazing wildfire.
2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. We're going to look at verse 7. We're down this morning. Is this spring break? Spring break 2022. You're in church. Let's pray for all those people suffering for Jesus on the beaches. You know what? Let's not. <laughs> not long ago, we had a birthday party for my mom uh, at our house, and she's, you know, we asked her, uh, me and my two brothers, what do you want to do? She said, I just want to have a cookout. I want to go for a walk. And I'm like, all right. So we made that happen. And as we're sitting there eating, um, my brothers start talking about this show that they're watching. And I have come to the realization that I don't know if it's because I'm pushing 40 or I don't know when it happened. I don't know if I ever was cool, but if I was, I'm not anymore. <clears throat> and um, your pastor's the guy that doesn't have Facebook or Instagram or I, I don't have any sense of fashion. Um, so so it's, it's really funny. Sometimes people will come to me and they'll be like, Pastor, you look really good this morning. I'll be like, thank you. Brandy dressed me. Um, and that's the really, the, I mean, it's my standing joke with Brandy. It's like the only time I get that's when she tells me what to wear. Um, but I'm not, a, I'm not a hipster. I'm not up on what's going on in the world. So they start talking about this show, um, The Amazing Race. Anybody ever heard of this? The Amazing Race. And they're like, um, yeah, yeah, we, Amazing Race, Amazing Race. And I'm like, no, I've never heard of it. And we're standing there. And, and then my sister-in-law mentions that there is a couple on the show that piqued Brandy's interest called the Holdernish family. Does anybody know who the Holdernish family is? If you watch uh, Instagram, they, they write like silly songs and do s sketches and stuff like that, skits. And um, that meant nothing to me. And Brandy's like, it's a, it's a couple I, I play with their parodies on Instagram. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I know them. Yeah, I know them. And so Brandy would have watched it because the Holdernish family. My sister-in-law was watching it. Because of the Holders family. My other brother, they're like big fans of the show. And he's like, dude, it's good. you got to watch it. And I'm like, all right, well, you know. So. Me and Brandy start watching it. And um, I'm fascinated by the show. I can't, I can't quit watching it. And, and so if you've not seen the show, the premise is pretty simple. You've got, you've got teams of two that are given clues, and they literally race around the world. And... And there's high highs and there's low lows and, and they're basically given maybe like a, a rubric, if you will, but they're not, it, 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 it's not exact instructions on how they get there. So it's, it's all about the choices that you make can either put you ahead in the race or behind in the race. And in watching this show, I, I, I can't tell you, like, my wheels began to turn and I thought, you know what? God's Word basically testifies that this journey that we're on called life is an amazing race. And, and I want to show you that this morning. I want, I want us to stand together as we read 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, and then I'm going to read Hebrews 12, uh, verse 1. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my... Yeah. I tell this young man going to the ministry, I'm like, you go to seminary, you can make anything biblical. I have kept the faith. Hebrews 12, 1. Read it with me. Look at the screen. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every way and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for your love. Lord, your mercy. Lord, we thank you for your grace. And Lord, this morning, we ask for your help in our race. Lord, I ask that you would just speak as only you can. Bless the reading and the preaching of your word. Lord, I pray that it would be your voice that's heard today, not mine. And Lord, that you would do something that only you can get the credit for. Lord, we love you. We thank you most of all for Jesus, and it's in his name we pray, amen. You may be seated. And so my mind started just running with all these ideas. And the first thing that I think I've noticed in the, in the race is 
sometimes they're couples, sometimes they're friends, but they're teams of two. And if you're in a relationship or you've been married for more than maybe five minutes, like I just did a wedding last night, and they probably haven't had this yet because they're, they're probably just now on their way to their honeymoon. And so I haven't had the first real fight. <laughs> but somewhere along the way, you're going to have one, if not multiple. And it's fascinating to me that, that the teams that seem to fall behind are the teams that oftentimes are losing focus. And, and they begin to fight. Or they get, they get maybe another team does something maybe a little underhanded or a little unethical or maybe says something that rubs them the wrong way. And they'll become so focused on the other team that they forget they're in a race for a million dollars. And as a matter of fact, sometimes it's fascinating to me. I told Brandy, I said, like, some of these people actually talk about quitting. Like, they're in, they're in fourth place, and this, these couples will get in such a fight that they're like, one of them was like, that's it, I'm done, I'm just quitting, I'm going to sit down here at the airport, I'm, just, I'm done, you tell me when you're ready. I'm like, bro, you got a million dollars on the line. Like, you can't suck up your pride for five minutes and get on an airplane? Like, seriously? A million dollars? That's a lot of money. It is to me, anyway. And... And that led me to this. I, I think that we can draw some parallels here, biblically and spiritually. Maybe the most important thing in my journey is to focus on my race. And, and to run my race. If we go back to, to 2 Timothy chapter 4, let me draw your attention back there for just a minute. Because I say this sometimes in preaching and in teaching on Wednesday nights and in Bible study. It's fascinating to me to notice what's not in the Bible. And sometimes that will preach even better than what is actually there. So notice what Paul says. He's taken possession of the race. He says, I finished my race. You have to finish your race. And we're all in this race, but it's fascinating to me that the Apostle Paul doesn't say, I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I finished Barnabas' race. I helped Peter run his. I'm going to help John Mark finish his race. No, when Paul was focused, he said, I finished my race. You see, sometimes, and this is true in runners, I talked to a guy this week because I've ran a little bit, but my experience is very, very limited. As you can probably tell, I've not been doing a whole lot of running lately. But I called a guy that's ran numerous marathons, and he, he's, he's a runner. And I said, you know, the thing that I, I found fascinating was, was several years ago I did one of these big long runs. I think they call them ultra runs. It was like 40 miles. And, and, and I, was, I was listening to my music. I mean, I had like the Rocky Four soundtrack going. <laughs> but then my earbuds died. And so when I, when, I, when I was in that part of the race that I was just, I was pacing, but then my earbuds died, and it was just the sound of my own breathing. And then, like, this race drew, like, professional runners. Like, I was just interested in finishing. But I got so angry and frustrated and almost, like, discouraged because I would be running and thinking, like, man, I'm doing really good. Like, I'm at mile 18. And then I would, I would hear this voice from behind me, and you could hear the footsteps and be like, on your left, and I'd be, I'd be okay, you know, and I kind of step over, and I'd be like, "Wait a second, we're doing nine mile loops, and this dude already passed me once. Like I'm getting lapped." And I thought it was good that I was running at like an eight, eight and a half minute clip. Like this guy's doing four and a half, five minute miles, and it made me mad. And I got to the point to where every time I heard it, it was like fingernails on a chalkboard. And I'd be running. I'd think, man, I need to pick it up a little bit. Let's go. You know, and, and, and Rocky IV died, but I can still do it in my head. And bing, 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 On your left. I'd be like, dude, if you say that one more time, I'll push you right over this bluff. In Jesus' name. (laughs) 
And then I was like, why am I focused on that guy? I'm not running. And I think that we do this. Watch this. I think we do the same thing spiritually sometimes. God hasn't called you to be the person sitting beside you. He's not. He's called you to run your race. Don't watch the other runners. Don't pay any attention to them. Don't compare yourself to them. You're not them. They're not you. They're running their race. You've got to finish yours. I've got to finish mine. And I think that especially with social media and the, in the, in the culture and the world that we live in, it is so tempting, if not by our attitudes and implications, sometimes we feel it necessary to notice what other people are doing. It's fascinating to me, like, how things change and how quickly. Now, some people are going to get offended by this, but I'm, I'm going to try to help you. I'm going to show you something. When I was a kid, we had birthday parties. I had birthday parties. I went and attended birthday parties. And if it was my birthday, people brought me presents. Is this right? And, and if it was like Matt's birthday and I got invited to it, then I took Matt a present. Can you imagine my shock when my wife told me the first time that the kids that come to our party, we got to get them presents? It's called party favors? I'm like, but that doesn't make sense. It's, it's our kid's birthday. <laughs> when it's their kid's birthday, we'll get them present. And it's like, you know what? And I start thinking about this. This is how stuff starts. Somebody somewhere, and this person deserves a real beating, decided <laughs> that this would be a thing and a good thing. And so then another person started doing it. And somebody else saw that on Instagram. And they thought they needed to do it. And the moms and dads that attended that party said, well, apparently this is a thing now. And now we get presents on our kid's birthday to the other kids that come to the party. True. And this is why I'm saying this premise sometimes happens in the spiritual level. And I'll sit there and I'll think, and I wish I could play guitar and sing like Adam or Matt. I wish I had pops like Whitley. I wish I could play the piano like David Haney. I had to call one of our IT guys, John, not long ago, be like, man, I messed up my computer. I wish I could fix a computer like John. But that's their race. I was walking by a room this morning, and I, I got to hear our youth minister, Travis, and he was talking, and I, I got to hear him interact with some kids, and I passed down the hallway, and I was, I was listening to Brad, and he was, you know, teaching the kids, and I was like, man, they're good with kids. I wish I was good with kids. Sometimes I feel like I'm not good with my kids. But that's not my race. That's their race. And sometimes I think that it's awfully easy for us to compare ourselves to other people and then not like what we see. But here's what I came to preach and declare to you this morning upon the authority of the Word of God. They're not your standard. Jesus is. That's not your race. The one that God has given you to run is. And as a matter of fact, the Bible says this. Read this with me. This is 2 Corinthians 10, 12. This is a command. Don't compare yourselves among yourselves. If you do, you are not wise. So that very thing that we are so tempted to do, and so oftentimes we are doing, the Word of God says, don't do that. You want to know why? Because you're going to watch another runner. You're going to get invested. You're going to get focused on their race, and you forgot you were running one yourself. And it's going to bring you down. It's going to get you distracted. It's going to get you discouraged. And so God says, Isaiah, don't compare yourself to anybody else or anybody else's race. There's a couple quick hitters here. Number one, run your race. Look at 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? At least that's how it used to be. Now everybody gets a participation trophy. I didn't say it was right or wrong. I'm just observing. <laughs> oh, but wait, it is wrong. Run in such a way. <laughs> oh, don't get mad at me. Don't shoot the measure. The Bible says it. Run in such a way as to get the prize. And here's what I'm, I'm trying to get us to, to notice this morning. In the amazing race, they're racing for a million dollars and these lavish vacations in and, and, and our race. 
You're running for some amazing prizes. You're running for a happy, a blessed, and a healthy marriage. You're running to win souls. You're running in such a way that everybody around you gets pointed to Jesus. Amen? We're running for a specific purpose. Number two, don't stop running. And this is, the, this is the thing. It's like we'll watch somebody else. We'll compare ourselves. And it's like that guy that kept lapping me, or guys, plural. And it was like, man. Like if, you, if I can't beat them, can I? You know, at some point in time, I had to make this. Like, man, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna finish. <laughs> That's the goal. But I think we have this mentality sometimes in this temptation. Just quit. You, you don't have to run. And this is what happened to this church. Look, let me show you. Galatians chapter 5, verse 7. Notice Paul is writing in the past tense. He tells this church, you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? He's asking this church, he said, there was a time when I was watching you, I was, I was looking at you, I, I, I saw you running, I know you're capable, I've, I've seen it, Paul says, but now I'm looking at it and I don't see it. So his question to this church is, who stopped you, what stopped you from running? And we'll come to that in just a moment, but right now, I just want to preach this very quickly. If you've stopped Maybe it's time that you start again. Maybe it's time to get back in the race. Number three, what stopped you? Let's go back to our primary text a minute, Hebrews 12, 1. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. Now, some people are going to say, well, that's sin. No, sin is different. See, it addresses that now. And the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race is set before you. If you stopped... And if you recognize now, like, I'm not running, or I'm not running effectively, or I'm not running to my full potential, I want you to right now examine yourself, ask yourself some questions. What stopped me? Who stopped me from running? To some people, it could be addiction. To some people, it could be anger. Other people, bitterness. Some people, jealousy. To some others, it's a, it's a litany of other things. I mean, it could be anything, but identify that thing, then give it to God, confess it, and then get back in the race and start running again. Stress, bitterness, all these things. Number four, focus on the finish. Again, going back to distraction. Look at 2 Timothy 4, 7 again. I fought a good fight. I have finished my race. I have kept the faith. Philippians three fourteen. I press, the, the word press there, you're looking at the transliteration. Um, you you, you want to learn a word this morning? Everybody say D. Not everybody's playing. We're going to play or we're not going to. Everybody say D. O. Co. D. O. Co. There you go. See, now you're a Greek scholar. Huh? You're welcome, America. But, but it means to run swiftly. And, and this is the picture that the Apostle Paul's drawing. He says, like, not only don't compare yourselves among yourselves, church at Corinth, not only who hindered you, but you need to focus on the prize because there's a prize, there's a finish line. Focus on the finish. Set your eyes on that and run swiftly in that direction. To the believer in Christ Jesus, it would be like this. Like, once you understand the course, once you understand what God has you to do, then get on that path and start running and do it as fervently and as fastly as you possibly can. Many people can't focus on the finish because they're focused on their failure. And something that happened way back here is now hindering their running here. And they're allowing the past to dictate the present. And what I'm preaching to you is, is if, if there is ever a character study that that could have been true for, and probably should have been true for, it is that of the Apostle Paul. And we're reading all of his writings. And, and I want you to think for just a minute just how Satan knows how to whisper in your ear, in my ear, to get us distracted and to get us discouraged. You don't think he did that to Paul? Bet he did. And I think this is the reason that Jesus decided to give him a brand new name. Because his old one was not that good. And I think I, I would be willing to bet even 
that Satan came along and told him like, oh, you're going to go preach at Corinth. <laughs> Neat. Hey, remember that time uh, Saul, I mean, Paul, but you're kind of the same person, that you were like killing those people? Wasn't there, a, wasn't there a guy that was preaching the same message that you were going to preach, but you didn't like it, and remember you were going to have him stoned and then did? W- weren't you the very guy that was persecuting the church? Now you're going to be planting them? I bet you there's a crowd there, Saul. I mean, <laughs> again, Paul. And he says these things, and he says, no, 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 listen, I'm not going to focus on my failure. I'm going to focus on the finish, and he did. And at the end of his life, he said, I finished my race. And it's not about how I'm doing now. It's about how I finish and when I finish. Number two, roadblocks and detours. I told Brandy, like, this is is my one pet peeve in the show. Every time this comes up, the host, Phil, explains to you what these two things are. And I thought that I would have this memorized by now, but I want to make sure that I don't mess it up. Uh, A roadblock is a task that only one person can perform that must be completed before the race can continue. So it's some kind of obstacle, some kind of game. A detour is a fork in the road and a choice that the racers must choose. Each has pros and cons. So maybe one is a shorter distance, but the task that they have to complete at the end of that shorter distance may be more complicated than the longer route. Amen if you understand. If you've seen the show, you know. But you don't have to have seen the show to understand this. Our lives... Spiritually speaking, this, this life is full of roadblocks and detours. They're full of forks in the road. They're, they're full of, of these tasks that you have to do. And, and as I begin to think about this and process this, I understand theologically that God gave me free will. So I face forks in the road all the time. And, and this, I think, is the litmus test for us as the racers in this amazing race of life is If I go left or if I go right or if I stay straight, which one honors God the most? That's the litmus test. And in which way is God going to receive more glory of me going in which direction? Then you've got these detours, these roadblocks, man. I mean, have you ever been, and I'm not going to ask you to answer out loud, I'm not going to, have you ever been in a season of life? where it just feels like it is just, instead of coming up roses, it's coming up like black licorice. I've I've always been concerned about those people that like black licorice. I only know one person in our entire church, and we got a lot, we're down today, but we got a large church. I only know one person in our church that likes black licorice. His name is, well, I don't want to give you his name. I got to keep confidentiality and stuff like that. I'll give you a hint. It, it rhymes with bat moling. <laughs> and if you can get it from that hint, then you can continue on your race. <laughs> but, but in a season of life where you're saying, man, I didn't see that coming. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. Lord, I, I don't know what's going on. I, I, don't, I don't understand why this is happening. And what I'm trying to get us to understand as believers in Christ Jesus and as a church corporately, Satan doesn't care why you stop running as long as you quit. And he's going to try to use every detour. He's going to try to use every roadblock. He's going to use everything that he can to discourage you, to wear you out, to get you to sit down and say, I'm not going a step further. And if that's you this morning, there's nothing that is going to make Satan angrier than for you to say, that's it, I'm done, drink of water, quick stretch of the old hammies, and away I go again. And begin to run. I I think the Bible's full of detours, roadblocks, a task that must be performed. Moses, raise this rod. You can't go any further in your race until you do. Noah, build this ark. You can't go any further in your race until you do. David, kill that giant. You can't go any further in your race 
until you do. Daniel, it's nap time. The only bad news is it's nap time with lions and they're hungry. It's like some kind of twisted sleepover. But you can't continue your race until you do. Joshua, man of war, famous general. I'm not going to ask you to siege anything or dig walls under tunnels or anything. You're just going to march around the walls <laughs> many, many times in silence. That's what God asked him to do. You can't go any further in your race until you do. Paul, endure this shipwreck, endure this beating, endure this jail cell, endure this snake bite. You can't go any further in your race until you do. You see, our lives experience hardships, trials, tribulations, troubles. We're no different than the people in the pages of the Bible. What, in my estimation, maybe separates success from failure and from finishing from failure is simply someone that was not willing to take no for an answer and said, no matter if I have to build an ark, slay a giant, sleep with some lions, be homeless for a little while, or endure this affliction, to God be the glory, I'm going to keep running. Maybe even I stopped for a minute, but now I'm going to start running again. Running is the most important thing. Last but certainly not least. I am maybe most thankful... For a father that helps us finish. And so there's, there's quitting in my own volition. There's sitting down or maybe taking an extended break. And then there's becoming injured. And so there's, there's roadblocks, there's detours in life. There are seasons and times of stress and grief. There are a multitude of different curveballs that, that life can throw me that makes me want to quit. But then there are things that happen in our lives that can be so discouraging, so hurtful, so painful, they, they, can, they can injure you so bad that for the moment you're incapable of running. And I want to sh show you this, and I want to give you a quick premise, and then you're going to watch a, a small clip. And what you're going to see is, is, is the 1992 Barcelona Olympics, and it's the 200-meter and Britain's greatest chance of meddling was this sprinter named Redmond. And as he's coming around, I think it's turn two, he completely rips his hamstring. And I want to I show you a couple things. Here's what I want you to watch for, church. Number one, notice the pain that's on his face. But notice, secondly, he gets back up. But then the third thing that happens to me is the most impressive and the most moving. Go ahead and roll that clip. The man that's just coming on the track is his father. Security tried to tell him he couldn't be there. Dad wasn't there. You're going to come back and try to tell him.
get out here, man. Shoot, get out here. this clip. I don't know who's hurting more. Him or his dad? No security guard. What? Uh, you can't be here, sir. Uh, we have protocols here. Get out. Go on. I said get. Get. Watch him. Get. Get. man had trained his entire life for that moment. And in one instance, it all went away. You can see not only the physical pain, but you can probably see the emotional pain on his face. A season in life where physically nor emotionally, he was trying, he was giving it his all, but he, but he couldn't go anymore. He was too injured. But the thing that's so powerful and moving to me is the father that jumps on the track and runs to his son and puts his arm around his shoulders and basically carries him across the finish line. I'm glad I serve a God like that. I'm thankful that no matter what's happening in my life, he's got an inclined ear. I'm thankful that when life gets at its worst, I have a father that will help me finish. I'm thankful that no matter what's going on or how bad life gets or how painful the moment is, he never leaves me nor forsakes me. And no matter what Satan tries to throw at me in that moment, the Bible teaches even in the book of Job that God has a protective hedge around us and that Satan cannot get in and cannot do anything unless the father lets him do it. And I thought about that so many times this week. It's like there's these moments when, when God allows that. And I don't know why I'm not God and I'm not sovereign. But He does. And then there's moments. And I, I, I had that moment this week. I was like, man, I'm thankful for those moments when God tells the enemy, no, He's had enough. He's not taking not more, more of your blows. I'm taking all the darts for Him. And herein is also the gospel message. That's exactly what Jesus did for you so that you could be in the race. The Bible says He took your sin. He took your punishment. He who knew no sin became sin. And so I want to challenge you with a couple of things as we close. If you're here this morning and lost... You're not in the race, and it's time that you get in. And the prize is heaven and forgiveness and a personal relationship with the Son of God. Two, maybe you've sat down, maybe been on a long break. Maybe it's time that you got back in the race and started running. Maybe you're here this morning and say, you know what, I'm running. I'm just not running very well. I'm not living up to my full potential. Do that. Or maybe you're in a season of life where you're injured and hurt. Tell the Father, and He'll help you finish. You see, we serve a God that's willing and ready to provide whatever need that we have to finish this amazing race. So I challenge you this morning, whatever your need is today, come. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for your love. Lord, I thank you for your patience that you have with us. And Lord, I, I thank you so much for your compassion. And Lord, your grace and your mercy. Lord, I thank you for helping us finish. 
Lord, I ask that you would speak this morning as only you can and do. Lord, I pray that you would save souls, change lives. And Lord, help us to do business with you. Lord, bless this your church and bless this time of invitation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. attention hey listen if you're visiting for the first time please come back if you have a need prayer uh, whatever want to talk to somebody Travis will be at the live table this morning Matt will be up here 
Uh, my phone number's in the bulletin. Call me anytime. Church, I love you. Let's pray it out today. Father God, thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for your love. Lord, we thank you for helping us in our race. And Lord, we just ask now that you would go with us throughout this week. Bless us. Use us. Lord, give us eyes to see, ears to hear the needs that are around us. Lord, we love you. We thank you most of all for your son Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. God of mercy.